Okay, so how many of you thought I'd lost my mind because I was reading verses that weren't actually printed in the bulletin when I started reading the God? <laughs> At least I have like two honest, three, four honest people out here. <laughs> I had to read that because it sets the stage for what's going on. I mean, if I would have started with, um, and he said to them, blessed are those who are, it doesn't really set it up. You don't really understand what's happening here. But, and we'll get back to that in just a moment. But do you really feel blessed when you're poor? When you go to pay your bills and there's not enough money in the checking account to pay your bills? Do you feel blessed at that point in time? Do you feel blessed when you're hungry and you haven't eaten for 10 minutes? <laughs> okay, an hour or two or a half a day, three days. Do you feel blessed when you're weeping because you miss someone that you love? And that's what Jesus said this morning, right? Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who are weeping. Or the even kicker one. Blessed are you who are reviled and abused because of me. Is that a blessing? And, it, and Luke even leaves it like it is, right? Where Matthew takes it and spiritualizes it. Blessed are you who are poor in spirit. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness. No, Luke is just brass tacks. Here it is. Blessed are you when you're poor. Blessed are you when you're hungry. Blessed are you when you weep. Because. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Who gets the kingdom? This is not a trick question. Who gets the kingdom? We do, right. That's, that's a good answer. Not the answer I'm looking for, but that's a right answer. Who usually gets the kingdom? Let's ask it that way. The, the who? The king. And is the king poor? Do poor people get to have any say in the kingdom or the government or, or anything like that? Not usually. It's all based upon money and power, right? And Jesus is saying right here in the Gospel of Luke, on the plain, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. The best kingdom there could ever be is yours. And it's yours because you are poor. Which is not an easy thing for any of us to hear, even those of us in here who are poor. We're not poor, right? If we look at the whole grand scheme of the world, we are amongst the richest people in the world. Because most of us, probably I could venture to say all of us here, have a home and a bed. And we have heat. And we have electricity. And we have running water. Things that we take for granted that other people wish they could have. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is yours. And if you're hungry, you're going to be fed. And if you weep, you're going to laugh. And if people revile you because of me, you have obtained the kingdom. But woe to you if you have enough to eat. Because you've already gotten your fill. And woe to you if you have money because you've already got your consolation. And woe to you if you are laughing and people say good things about you. Is it really bad to be rich? It's as hard for you to hear that question as it is for me to stand up here in front of you and ask that question. Is it wrong to be rich? Is it wrong to have the things that we have? I hear some rumbling, but I'm not hearing any commitment. <laughs> I want a commitment. Is it wrong to be rich and to have the things that we have? No. no. I heard a maybe, and I like that. I wanted to find out who said that. I want to talk about that later. Maybe is probably the right answer to this question. Because it's not yes. It's not wrong to have money. It's not wrong to be blessed. It's not wrong to have the things that we have. But where does it become wrong? 
what we do with it. And that's the reason why those first four or five verses that I read are super important here. Because you see, in Matthew, we know this section as the Sermon on the Mount, right? Jesus went up to the mountain, he took his disciples with him, and he taught them. But in Luke's Gospel, Jesus just went up the mountain, he called his disciples, he prayed to God, he called his disciples, and he came back down from the mountain onto the plain. And what is a plain? A big flat area where everybody is on the same level. Jesus came down off the mountain to be with the people where they were. He met them in their struggles. He met them in their everyday lives and said to them, you are the owners of the kingdom of heaven. And all your troubles now are going to be taken away. But if you have anything and you're not helping out those around you, you've already gotten what you're going to get. That's why it's maybe. Because the things that we have were given to us as a blessing from God. And what we do with them is what shows where our hearts are. Because it's that last part. We had a... We have a breakfast Bible study every Tuesday morning where we read through the scripture. Um, me and some other gentlemen. I think I use that word loosely. <laughs> Clyde is a member of that group. <laughs> right, we read through the scriptures and Clyde read the scripture this past Tuesday and he stopped at the end of that first section. He stopped at the end there before it got to that part that kind of explained it. Right. The blessing. He read the blessings and the woes. And then that was it. And the, but there's that little section after it, right? I say to you, listen, say to you those that will listen, love your enemies and do good to those that hate you. Because how easy is it to love someone that loves us? It's super easy. How hard is it to love somebody that really wants to see you not do good in life? It's hard. But Jesus says right here, love your enemies and do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those that abuse you. This is not easy stuff. Give to everyone who begs. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. And if anyone takes your coat, give them your shirt as well. And the kicker line in here, we had a really good discussion about it on Tuesday. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. What does that mean? Here we are in All Saints Sundays where we're talking about and remembering those who have passed on before us and all of the saints here amongst with us and all the saints that are going to be coming. Right? That's what happens at this table up here in just a little bit where we gather where all of the saints of all time and places, even those alive here this morning and those alive all over the world that are taking communion, were gathered together in this one, it's like a mystical time warp kind of thing that brings everybody together at one point in time. And we all partake of this one meal. So what does all of this mean this morning? And for our lives as saints out in the world that God created. Yes. What it means. If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other one to them also. We take this as being a doormat, right? If somebody, I let anybody do whatever they want to to me because that's what God said. I'm just supposed to lay down and give everybody anything that they want and not worry about it, right? No, I got, I got a couple people, again, again, I'm seeing some, hearing some rumblings, but I'm not having any commitment here. Are we supposed to be doormats? No. no, we're not. But what does that mean? If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other one to him also. I preached on this before. I know I did because somebody came up. Who was it that came up here? I asked a volunteer to come up. And it was somebody from over here. I think it was Kurt. I'm going to have Robert. Come on, Robert. 
Remember, we're on the plane, right? We're all on this level playing field. But to, so if someone strikes you on the cheek, say that I'm I'm a higher status than I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying this. But say that I am of a higher. <laughs> Say that I am of a higher status than Robert. If I strike him on the cheek, I'm going to always use my right hand because I would never use strike anybody with my left hand. Why don't I hit anybody with my left hand? I use my left hand to do things that I'm not going to talk about in worship. Um, going to the bathroom kind of things, people. That's that's all it is. It's, so that's why you would never use your left because it's dirty. You would never... Even washing it, it would never really... So I would hit him with my right hand and I would strike him on his cheek. With the back of my right hand. Why? Why? Because I'm of a higher status than him and I'm going to hit him. I'm going to show him that he is lower than me. So if I hit him, he's going to turn the other cheek. And then what do I have to do? Remember, I'm not going to use my left hand. I have to now strike him with the palm of my right hand, which then does what? It automatically puts us on a level playing field. It automatically raises his status to the level of mine. Jesus is not saying that we have to be mats and be walked upon. Thank you. Jesus is saying that all of us are the same in the eyes of God. There is no one that is of any higher status than anyone else in this playing field. Because all of us are sinners. And all of us are saints. All of us have fallen short of what God has called us to do. And all of us have been raised up out of the muck and the mire by what God did for us right here. It's what we're going to see here later for Adeline. God says that you are blessed when you need other people. But woe to you when you think you've got it all together and you don't need anybody. Because none of us are going to get out of this. Without the help of those around us and the help of God to lift us up and to throw us out into the world to share his love and his mercy and grace. So remember on this day, as we celebrate the saints that have passed and the saints that are going to come, the saints that we see here in our midst, that we are all in this together and that we're all on a level playing field and that none of us are better than anybody else. And each one of us needs the person sitting next to us more than we can possibly imagine. So put all of your faith and trust in God. Because God has promised that he will give us everything we need. That's through him and through all of the saints that we see around us. So go and share his love. Mm.